YouTube, this is Moobit, your friendly media manager from GamingAds.co.uk with a bit of a vlog. I'm going to come back in a vlog style -y. Yeah, I'm not going to say that again. Um, yeah, few. I've got quite a few unboxings, quite a few reviews to do. And you know what? I've been away for a while and been a bit busy with, with work and new jobs and all that kind of stuff. You know how it goes, family uh, and everything else. So I thought I'd get back into the old YouTubing. And um, I think I'm going to start doing my uh, reviews, my unboxings, my tech stuff in, in a kind of a vlog style because, you know, it's all well and good having the whole, you know, white background with the hands coming out of the screen like this, unboxing things. But you know what? Everyone does that. And there's, there's only a few people actually put themselves on the camera. And uh, there's a guy called I Love Mess um, who does Transformer stuff and he is, I love his videos, he's brilliant because he talks about himself for a few minutes and then he starts playing with Transformers and, and you know, let's face it, bots are awesome. But he's an interesting guy and he comes across as a nice guy and I thought I'd, I'd, probably, I'd try and do a bit, bit of that myself. I'm going to start vlogging, I'm going to start, you know, this kind of static thing, cameras, holding mobile phones, stuff like that, because to be honest, these days I can't be able to sit down and write. This new job I've got is a hell of a lot longer hours, as you can see from my old wrinkly dead eyes. Um, getting a bit too tired to sit down and do some writing in the evenings as well. So um, I'm going to start doing a bit of vlogging. It's easier than maybe even go as far as using drag, drag and dictation to see if it were the right thing for me. I don't think it'll work, but worth a try, isn't it? It's all tech at the end of the day. Anyway, today's vlog, tech and what to buy at the moment in general and more importantly, video cameras and things like that. Now, I came in a little, into a little bit of money, not a lot, only a tiny bit and I've spent it now so don't come asking, um, a few hundred quid anyway that I was allowed to be frivolous with and I was going to save that for either the PS4 or the X-Bone and uh, you know, as in any good any gamer, any tech fan probably would do. And you know, I'm waiting now, I'm looking at E3, and we're looking at the press releases that come into gaming, and has all that kind of stuff. And yeah, they, they both look quite, poten you know, potentially all right. It takes a lot to impress me with, with new tech when it comes to gaming, at least, just because, as a lot of you know, I'm a, more of a retro gamer, I, and more of an indie gamer. I've, uh, obviously, I grew up with the Spectrum 48K, I grew up with, you know, the, an Atari, I grew up with the, the Mega Drive, things like that. So to me, gameplay is the winner. I'm not like a fanboy of one console or the other. At the moment, I prefer the Xbox just because the online experience. Except when you're playing Call of Duty with people you don't know and they're all shouting stuff down the microphones at you, but that's why stuff people like gaming ads exist. But anyway, the, the problem I've got with new games, to me, as a cynical old man, as it were, is they all look the same, don't they? I mean, let's face it. This, to me, there's original stuff out there, out there, don't get me wrong, but the stuff that people buy, the lemmings out there in the high street go and buy, Call of Duty, Battlefield, Forza, you know, GTA, Gran Turismo, all that kind of stuff, FIFA. And yeah, they, they improve every year and they look prettier every year, but where's, where's the fun? Where's the, where's the new features? Where's the original ideas? You know, it's these days it's all first person shooters which I don't really care about that much. Really, I, I like playing with the GDs and other, and other websites of, of that ilk. You know, when we do private lobbies, that is a hell of a lot of fun. But you know, when you if you're playing, like you just jump on your Xbox and you can't be bothered with, we're socialising for half an hour, you just want to just play a quick game. Eh, do I want to go on Call of Duty and play against some load of... 12 year old kids shout races abuse? No. Do I want to go on Battlefield and get accused of being a noob? No, not really. You know. Um, but what I do want to do is go on two things that are original. Like, like Alan Wake is a good one. Um, at the moment, you've not seen me on the Xbox for so long because I got a Wii U as well. And now I've been addicted to Lego City Undercover. And I know I just said GTA. But it's GTA with Lego and it's all these little fun film references, you know, TV references, Starsky and Hutch the A-Team, you know, Matrix, all that kind of stuff, and it's just, it's just a hell of a lot of fun to go around smashing stuff up or collecting dots or, um, or studs, should I say, um, riding pigs around, whatever, 
you can pretty much do what you want. Good, 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 good laugh. You know, so I digress, but obviously the problem I've got so far with the, with the Xbox and the PS4 is A, the price, but you know, we, all, we always know that they come out for 400 odd quid, and B, the DRM issue. Now, this has since been resolved. Obviously, we've had this shitstorm on the news about um, not being, potentially not being able to play second hand games. Now, you know, I'm a father. I nowadays don't have a, a lot, loads and loads and loads of time to, to play for pleasure. You know, I've got time to play for, to review things, but just to sit down for a few hours just for pleasure. I, I, and, and by the time I get round to it, you can buy a second hand copy of, of, a, of a game for a tenner these days and it's not it's going to be different with the new consoles we know because obviously they're going to be more expensive that's just how it goes but stay with me and the fact that you can't you might potentially might not be able to play second hand put me off a lot which got me looking at cameras instead now obviously aside it's now um, sorted out uh, Microsoft have basically done a 360 ha 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 um, on the DRM issue, and it looks like you'd be able to. It basically will have the same kind of setup as a PS, as a PS4, and the Sony's been showing off. So they're basically the same console, with the exception that the Xbox has been found more. But you get the Kinect in there, and I'm placing my bets right now that there will be a gamers edition come out quite soon without the Kinect for the same price as the PS4. You heard it here first. But you know, people. I think people are trying to make out that people need the Kinect. But to be fair, if you're just hardcore gamers. You're not going to use it in flailing around like living room. You're not going to talk to your telly because you've already got in this country at least because you've got Sky and Virgin already. Why would you want to control it through your Xbox when you can just press a button rather than talk to it? I think it'd be good for showing off to your friends and it'd be good for the novelty value for a couple of months. But after, you know, think about really sit down and think about it. You're not going to use that feature after six months. I know I'm not. I'm going to use it as a tech end and a bit of a nerd and you know messing about but really a few months down the line I'm going to get bored I'm just going to reach for the remote control again you know it's the same with the Wii U you can control your virgin I've got virgin TV and uh, you can control your virgin TV box through your Wii um, tap pad um, and it's handy when you can't be asked if the TV is off or on standby you can't on the virgin box you can't turn off you have to get the tv remote or press the tv rather than getting up off my ass and walking across the room and pressing the tv on you reach up and there's a tv on button on the actual pad because i've got it charging on a table next to the lid, like next to the sofa so it's good for that but you know changing the channels through it no i've just used the actual remote control i did for a few weeks and then i stopped using it and i think that's how it's going to be for a lot of people if you don't but if you don't agree with me write down there in the comments Anyway, with that in mind, I thought, you know what, let's spend this uh, couple hundred quid on a new camera. Now, you're looking at the moment for my trusty ZI8 kept by Kodak, which is an absolutely amazing camera. Um, little mini thing, like a bit like a flip. Much better picture quality, and most importantly, microphone in. Very, very important for vlogging and, and things like that when you can't be asked just to sync, you know, have record your audio on a separate device in your pocket, like I sometimes do, and sync it up. Sometimes it takes a bit of a while, and it's bit of a ball ache if you're just talking like this plug a mic into the side you're away anyway and that got me thinking which camera should i go for on the one hand you've got slr entry level you know save a bit more money get an slr big lens yeah move movie style effects shiny shiny on the other hand you've got another kodak style one or just to update it so i've got one or two and the front one of that was possibly a GoPro. And I just can't decide. So I hit Twitter. And I want to give a big shout out to OX Matt and to Peter Moho, who um, came to my aid, along with many, many other, uh, other of you. But just, the, uh, just for the length of the video, I'm going to give a shout out to these two because Peter Moho, I ended up talking to him for like two days, for hours, and he just answered all my questions, and he was brilliant because he was being objective about both. I think he's a bit of a photographer himself and he uses both. And both were very, very helpful, so thank you. Go and follow those guys on Twitter. They're on the screen or in the description somewhere. I haven't decided yet. I'll try and put it on the screen for you guys. But after the long chat, I decided on a GoPro. Now, the problem with that was 
do I go for GoPro 2 and then also get an SLR, like a cheaper SLR but still have then have both play, to play about with, or do I go for GoPro 3 and nothing else, just because of the price of it. Now that was the problem and to be honest I'm not much of a photographer, I'd like to take it up but I, you know I've got enough on as, as previously mentioned so I can't be asked to go and learn how to take photos properly and things, I'm more of a point and shoot kind of guy. So in the end we went for that, which is of course the GoPro 3 Hero HD Black Edition. So I went, so after all the ooh and on of, of a cheap way of doing it, I went for the, for the top spurt one, which is just me all over really. You'll see it's already been opened just to charge the batteries, there should be a, a Wi-Fi remote control in there. Um, so yeah, that's what I went for, and I thought it'd be good as a little tech review bloggy type thing to just do an unboxing just on this video, and then we'll do some separate, you know, generic white background hands-on shots of, of how to set it up and things on separate videos. So obviously, a lot of these a, the YouTube is saturated with this kind of stuff already, um, but a lot of my followers um, are sort of more mature like I am and can't and don't go around. You know, searching YouTube all day like like I do, you know, because I watch YouTube rather than TV. Um, so a lot of them have been asking me about it and and what I think. So I'm going to give you my kind of opinions, kind of keep it short and sweet, because you want a really really detailed unboxing. I'll give a link down below. And here we go. And boring white background. Ahoy! Here it is. The GoPro Hero 3 Black Edition in its packaging. I'm going to do a quick unboxing because that's how I roll. But obviously, there's, um, as I say, there's quite a lot of unboxings out there. Um, I thought I'd do it from the uh, distinct view of myself being slightly blase about these things sometimes. But um, there it is in its packaging. I have opened it already, which I kind of cheated, to be honest. Um, just because I had to ch charge the batteries to show it off, but it comes in this rather nice Apple-esque packaging. I know everyone says Apple, but you know what? It uh, it is rather rather lovely. Got an outside slip here, and then the glass case. So when you look in the shop, it looks all shiny. And it glows. It says "Buy me," oh. like that. Now. We take the plastic off, and you've got a lovely little building block, hooray, which you can actually use. More on that on another video. But first of all, we have the Wi Fi remote. We'll switch to macro. Ta da! There we are. There's the Wi Fi remote. And it basically, this screen here tells you exactly what's on the, that screen there. And you've just got nice, simple mode and uh, record buttons and you can record several GoPros at once with this thing so it's very good. The main problem with this is from what I've seen on all the reviews of people who have this is the battery does not last very long at all. But there's an app for that. Ha ha ha. Anyway, you got a little keyring thing there that releases it. That's where you can attach to your fob to your keyring and you do have a little loop in the box. Uh, you can also attach the charger via that method as well and we'll show that off in a moment so that's that the camera itself comes on a little mount which you can't use the mount but if you can use this for DIY for making your own little mounts and things it doesn't say that in the box but obviously you know look at other videos and talking to my friend on Twitter there it's a very very handy thing to do if you want to make your own tripod mount for example or you can just go out and buy a tripod mount and they cost at the moment in the sales about a fiver but it's just an extra cost if you want to go at making your own you can do anyway camera comes like this I'm trying to get stop the shine going on it and this is in the waterproof casing sealed all the way around on its low rise mount just there and all you do to take it off the mount is just unscrew this and like that keep that safe to one side that mount comes off and you can swap it out for whatever's in the box um, 
a little thing to undo it I'll make a separate video for this but it, I found this quite tricky because there's no instructions in the box you fold that to one side and you push this whole housing up with your thumb like that which is actually is quite satisfying the fact that it takes a while to open which makes it quite me feel quite safe that it's going to be waterproof but that's the housing you can also get a new back door this back door here uh, removes so you can get one with little holes cut into it here which makes it better for the microphone if you have got it outside but you want to talk to it uh, a lot of people other extreme sports fans I've seen seem to record on this and then overlay their record their audio elsewhere and then sync the two up but it's whatever you want to do if you're just doing a point and shoot might be a good idea to put that on the um, skeleton case on the back that's the camera itself very small, give you a sense of scale. Um, huh. Anything I've got around is a two pence piece, but there you go. So it's give you an idea of the sense of scale. If you if you're not in the UK, this won't make any sense to you. Um, and it's about a little bit smaller than a two pence piece there. And obviously, you get the general idea. The lens is about the same size, but just under just under a two pence piece kind of size. Um, two buttons on there, mode, just like the remote mode and shoot that switches it on also and cycles through the different modes on the screen there, again it's easy to use the remote or use the app which you can get for Android or iOS battery pack, battery cover there slide that over, the battery comes out, self explanatory and inside there you have got your um, place for your SD card and your inputs in, in, in there as well, now there's one thing I did get stung by the Hero 2 had a mic in, which is I'm using my ZI8 at the moment with a mic in, which I like to have. This, if you see here, it's got HD, mini HDMI, it's got a USB, and it's got micro SD. No actual mic in slot. What you have to do is you get a USB to three and a half mil jack adapter, and use that, and plug it, the microphone in that way. Um, <laughs> bit of a ball ache to be honest because officially you're supposed to buy the GoPro own one from the website and they charge you 20 quid for the privilege now that's where the first little bugbears come because you, you can't attach it to a tripod without an extra adapter you can't you can't put a mic in without an extra adapter the only other problem with that with a mic in is if you've got it in the waterproof in the normal case this one the GoPro 2 had uh, a skeleton case where the sides were cut out so you can plug a mic in. This one doesn't. So even with the skeleton case on the back, there's nowhere for the mic to go in there. So I've seen a lot of videos of people buy, having to buy an extra one of these and then modifying it themselves and drilling a hole in there to plug the mic in. Again, they're selling you extra stuff. The other alternative is you can get something called the frame, which is basically a piece of metal that goes around the outside here and holds the thing in and I believe that does have a, a, a gap here for you to plug things in but again you know you're not got the protection for the GoPro which is the whole point of you buying it in the first place you haven't got the protection of the lens which is the main thing you damage the lens you're buying a new camera so I think that's a serious design flaw not too bad when you're inside the house and making vloggy videos when you're outside yeah you're better off either doing what we said about modifying it or like I say, you can you know record the audio separately, say on your phone with a mic in. I mean, I, I can sometimes use an iPad or an iPhone in my pocket with um, a mic in adapter. Use that, sync it up later on, for example. But you know, it's something to think about if you're getting it mainly for vlogs. You won't be able to have it in the waterproof case without some modification. Um, that's the camera itself. Inside the box, let's have a look here. We have the outer shell and then an inner shell inside here. If I can pull it out, whoa, maybe not. There we go. So that's the outer shell. You got a lovely inner shell. Learn more at gopro.com. You don't get any instructions, by the way, in this. You have to go to GoPro and download them. There's a little picture of how to take it off the stand. Very, very nice packaging. I'm going to do another vlog about packaging later on in a couple of vids time. Um, I do have a rant about some packaging, especially there's some GoPro packaging and then there's some other packaging as well, overuse. But this is actually nice, it's minimalist, it's lovely. You pull the whole thing out, 
got an inner box in there there's nothing underneath that that's just it that's just to raise it up and you end up with uh, back to normal you end up with a box like that we'll put that there we'll put that there Da -da 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 there you go all pretty pretty yay right so you end up with a box inside with all your gubbins inside and you can pretty much guess what's inside here so you've got a multi-way adapter in here can you see that so your bottom part that's on your helmet or whatever is there on your helmet and then you put your stud slides into there and that gives it forward backward motion but now you've also got 90 degrees left and right so you've got a full range of motion in how the camera is pointing so that's what you use that for um, you've got another bottom part there with a larger can you see that with a larger height than the flat one again gives you more space to maneuver what I've seen on some videos is they'll have the, hel the helmet like that, so that's the front of the helmet, that will point like that, and then you can have the multi-way adapter um, whoops, facing like all the way down like that, with the GoPro ha camera hanging upside down facing your face, then you get that weird um, camera attached to your head when you're walking around the city drunk kind of a thing, you know, that you see on many films these days. Um, that's basically how they do it. I'm going to do a video on that actually another time. Um, instruction manuals, well, if you can call it that, basically that's your instruction manual. Go to that website and download it. The end. Usual, usual legal gubbins. Uh, you get a USB adapter that I've admittedly already taken the wrap off for. USB adapter. You get the battery, which is whoop kind of a cool little battery again apparently these do not last all that long when you're going on high settings best advice to get a second battery I've got a second battery in that already so if you're going to get any accessory for this thing get a second battery if you're going to be filming for more than two or three hours at uh, your high settings there's your charger for your um, for your remote you take the key out as I showed you before and it slides in and away you go and that is about it. There's the skeleton back door. Can you see that? So you've got the holes. I'll take this out for you. That's one thing I haven't opened yet, to be honest with you. I'll be trying this out later on tonight. There we go. So there's your skeleton back door. And you can just about see there's holes there and there. So that lets the sound in a lot better. But like I say, it does take away the waterproofiness. So be aware when you're using that you still splash proof on the front I guess you also get a series of mounts um, and a spongy adapter thing that one's very important I'm going, to, I'm going to put a link to a video of a guy I saw on YouTube and I'm not going to be able to recreate it because I don't own a trampoline but he was basically showing the difference between using the little white thing and not on the standard adapter he had the um, camera mounted to his helmet um, and they start without the white little um, shock absorber thing which is also used to stop it falling off completely you had it without that and with that and without it it was just like <laughs> kind of you know rattling around in there really horrible noise with it almost silent it's a very good video I'll put the link in the description down there Go and check that out. I don't know the guy, I just literally just was surfing and I found it. So that, I'll probably do some demonstrations on that on my own channel later on. But that's there for you. And then you get two mounting strips to start you off. Again, as always with these things, you can buy more from GoPro.com because they want all of your money. So you get a flat one and you get a slightly curved one. That one tends to be used to go on top of a bike helmet or what have you. Um, and that one can be all go basically go on anything. Um, be aware that once these are on, they don't come off from what I'm told. So you put them on your car, it's going to be there forever. So just be aware of that when you're using them. Um, then you also get a few bit, a couple of bits and bobs in the bottom here, right in the bottom here. You get a ring to attach to your remote, so you can put it on your keychain, and you get some stickers. Ah. Yay. 
if you want to show your love for all things GoPro. Huzzah! And that is the unboxing in a nutshell. We'd best focus on it, eh? That might help. That's the unboxing in a nutshell. It's a, bit, it's a little bit messy, obviously, because I'm trying to get through it as quickly as I possibly can. Um, I must admit, I'm quite impressed with it. I, you know, because I've charged the battery, I have switched this on and just done a quick video. Actually, the first video I've done is a, a little experiment because um, obviously my wife is um, is uh, shorter than I am. But, you know, a lot of women are shorter than their husbands, and we just wanted to see what our points of view around the house was. So we strapped it to our heads and just did a lap around the house, came back and watched it back, and it was very interesting to see the different points of view. Um, so yeah, good little experiment to do with your partners if you get that. Um, hopefully you like this video. Um, I'm going to cut it off just there. And I'm going to do, in terms of attach, how to attach it to various objects and things like that, I'm going to do some separate videos for that. I'm going to put the links in the bottom. And if I can be bothered, I will update this video later on with clickable screeny link bits so you can go straight to it if you're watching it on a PC. Um, until th then though, remember to subscribe to youtube.com slash move it and youtube.com slash move it music my blog is on Word, wordpress under move it media and you can find me on twitter and all the lot of it and they're all on the screen right now hopefully this has been useful to you hopefully uh, you enjoyed my little rant at the beginning let me know what you think um, you know give me some feedback on that on that and the sort of new style of having a chat to you beforehand hopefully most of you who know me like it and uh, if you do then that's great and if you don't let me know and i can change it accordingly because it's just a work in progress until next time thanks for watching and i'll see you later i like to move it move it bit bit